Sego, and welcome to Akwazasni TV Live. I'm Louis Jacobs. And I'm Regan Jacobs. Thank you for joining us today. This is a little bit of a special broadcast. Um, today we'll be talking about the latest developments with the COVID-19 or coronavirus and some of the discussions and, excuse me, measures that have been put into place in the last couple of days. Uh, most people are aware that by now that the St. Regis Mohawk Tribe and the Mohawk Council of Akwazasne did declare a state of emergency for the territory. And uh, they did. And now we are also joined in studio live with us today is Brendan White, the Director of Communications at the St. Regis Mohawk Tribe. Nyawagoa for joining us. Yeah, well, good day. So as uh, some of our viewers may have already <coughs> seen, Akwazasne TV has gone live with CKON. We've been covering the state of emergency. There were several interviews done with emergency planning. Um, also, the chiefs were the initial um, interviewees at, CK, at CKON with ATV, um, talking about how we got here. And do you want to elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah, we had a series of talk shows take place uh, since yesterday, three mm -hmm. totals thus far, and I imagine mm -hmm. we're going to be doing more. It began on Monday morning with a talk show uh, with our local leadership from mm -hmm. both the Mohawk Council of Akwazasne and the St. Regis Mohawk Tribal Council to explain the state of emergency declaration, what that means for each respective organization, but more importantly, what that means for the community of Akwazasne. That was followed by a noon talk show with emergency operation coordinators, mm -hmm. uh, individuals who are overseeing the Akwazasne Joint Emergency Operations Plan for Mohawk Council of Akwazasne, Scott Peters, and for the tribe, Derek Cummins. And this morning, we had an opportunity to get uh, uh, more information mm -hmm. from our local public health officials for, again, for both organizations. Uh, some tuned in by conference call, and uh, we, we do have more lined up. Right, and you can still see those interviews on our Facebook page. They were live, so they're still on our timeline. And you can also join uh, CKON's Facebook page to look at the first interview, I think, with the Chiefs. It was probably, usually they put up the audio version of yeah. that, I believe. Um, but <laughs> first and foremost, we'd like to thank uh, you know our leadership and community members from both sides of the territory for approaching every aspect of this crisis with care and real concern for all Akwazas Lono. Um, and we were talking about this earlier from behind the scene phone calls in emergency planning and preparedness, right, you know, uh, to our, our political leaders and all of our administration that are working diligently to control this situation in this outbreak. Yeah, and for me, I just want to express uh, words of appreciation to everyone at this time, even our community members who are dealing with this adversity, trying to do the very best they can, but certainly for those frontline workers, our health professionals in particular, who are out there responding to phone calls, helping to get information out into the community and making arrangements so people can continue, for instance, stop and pick up their prescriptions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing to see. Often as a media, we get to see how things are unfolding. We have, you know, we get to see a lot of the behind the scenes of how things come together and all the people that are joining forces to ensure the health and safety of the community. And I mean, we just looking, you know, or listening in on that phone call that happened yesterday, there was 30 to 40 people in a conference call from all across the community from different levels and within the organization, like you said, health, policing, our political leaders, um, you know, all working to to give updates and, and then of course how are we collaborating as a community to ensure the safety and well-being. Yeah, we have, uh, for the tribe, we have our mission statement working together today to build a better tomorrow and that is not more evident than what we're dealing with today and I have to, you know, uh, say thank you to Akwazasne TV and to CKON 97.3 FM for working together to do these radio talk shows and also to broadcast them live as they're happening. Mm -hmm. uh, so thank you very much. Right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think it's important that yeah. people have the latest information yeah. all the way around. I mean, you can go to so many websites and, mm -hmm. and watch television, but to have the information uh, and what's happening locally mm -hmm. right here so that people uh, are less stressed about situations um, just, I think, helps. Right, 100%. I think we should take a look at, uh, we've compiled a list of uh, national standards between Canada and the U.S. with statistics. And also we're going to be talking about 
all of the local measures that are being taken to ensure the safety and well-being of the community. So, Doug, if you want to start with yeah, that. Yeah, just um, some of the cases. And, and it's funny because from day to day, things change mm -hmm. uh, so rapidly. Um, in terms of the information that we compiled this morning, uh, the total cases of uh, COVID-19 is uh, over 7,000 in the, in the U.S. with deaths over 100. Um, there are varying numbers depending on if you go to CDC or um, other, other websites, but um, it's substantial. And like I said, from day to day, mm -hmm. the numbers just jump exponentially. Uh, the total cases in Canada, um, is 569 um, from this morning uh, with eight deaths. Uh, the sort of statistics on how the virus was contracted depend. 74% uh, were travelers uh, probably leaving the country and 11% um, mm -hmm. had close contact with travelers. Uh, the jurisdictions for the United States obviously probably every state um, but the official numbers are that 53 areas um, are reporting cases, which includes the District of Columbia, Puerto Rico, Guam, and the U.S. Virgin Islands, um, with the other states right. in the continental United States. And so. I think I think you're right. I mean, these numbers are fluctuating; they're changing every day. Confirmed cases. Um, I think CDC is probably the best resource. <clears throat> But when you uh, talk about just the state of New York, right, something that hits close to home, something that's close to home, I mean, there's been all kind of travel advisories issued between the Mohawk Council of Akwesasne the, and the St. Regis Mohawk Tribe in terms of self-quarantining yeah. and um, people just being extra cautious in terms of where they've been, yeah. who they've been in contact with. Yeah, but I just want to go back to some of the figures that you guys are reporting, and those could absolutely be larger than what we're hearing. We're right. only limited by the number of test kits that are being available mm -hmm. to right. test people. Yeah. Yeah. And with the travel advisories, you know, uh, uh, we've seen some measures be put in place by both organizations to ask people to please reconsider your personal travel at this time. Mm -hmm. And this morning's talk show uh, with Dr. Ben Kelly, uh, the advisement that you know maybe you should consider no no further than 50 miles, which is the service area for the tribal clinic. Okay, mm -hmm. great. And uh, and also um, with regards to well, again going back to the traveling, um, do we touch on here uh, just like the groups, the, the amount of people that we should be surrounding ourselves with, how it started with 50 and now it's at 10? Did we talk about that? We haven't talked about it okay. yet, but, but it's, it's in, in here. Script, okay, yeah. so we're going <laughs> to keep going. <laughs> so with that being said, I mean, we're looking at some closures of businesses locally. I know that there was uh, decisions uh, being made with regards to uh, the restaurants, and but first and foremost... The biggest one was the Akwesasne Mohawk Casino. Yes, and uh, that announcement came down yesterday afternoon. Uh, there's been a lot of information that mm -hmm. uh, we've been fielding. Uh, I, I guess you could say st a staggering amount, and mm -hmm. we've been doing our very best to get it out into the community as quickly as possible. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, perhaps to the point where it's information overload. So we're, I, I, I think right now the amount of information that that's out there um, mm -hmm. is is, is going to continue for the foreseeable future right. uh, so we're gonna make it easier and consolidate it and group it together by service area to make it more accessible easier to locate for your for your viewers our visitors on our website and on our Facebook page mm -hmm. I was looking at the press release that was issued by the Akwesasne Moha Casino and if you look at general manager Todd Papino he had made a statement saying you know we are working in the best interests of the health and well-being of our patrons, but also the people who uh, work at the casino. And I mean, obviously that wasn't a light decision, but in the best interests of the public and to help control this pandemic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just wanna add that no decision is easy to make at this time. For sure. This is yeah. a very unprecedented time for our community and everybody mm -hmm. is doing their absolute best. Uh, we've seen some measures take place as we, as I just indicated for both organizations, Mohawk Council of Akwesasne mm -hmm. and the St. Regis Mohawk Tribe, but even within the business community, yeah. mm -hmm. including the casino. We've seen bars closed. We've seen dining areas <coughs> within the restaurants be closed. We've seen them transition over to takeout and delivery. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it safe to say, Brendan, that every business will sort of handle uh, their, the, the, the laying off of staff members and, and that sort of thing? Uh, it's going to be specific to each business and how they handle it and how, if there are sort of financial uh, options uh, for people who are laid off? Some of them have already case. done so, and yeah. uh, uh, those, uh, again, are very, very difficult decisions to of make. Of course. Um, and I can't, I, I can't speak to each individual sure. situation, mm -hmm. but I, I know that their employers are doing their absolute best to uh, provide for them at this time. Right, right. and I, I know that the St. Regis Mohawk Tribe, along with all of the subsidiary LLCs, have made decisions based on this particular situation that it puts the... Um, you know the well-being of the employee first um, and of course like you said there's no easy way to handle this everyone is affected at this point um, if you're watching some of the national press conferences led <coughs> by just here look look at in New York Governor mm -hmm. Cuomo the way that you had mentioned earlier the way he's handling um, the press conferences are very you know fact-based and but mm -hmm. there's there's a lot of discussion around relief Mm -hmm. and um, monetary relief for families um, in the up and are the American uh, public in the upcoming uh, weeks. Yeah, um, um, what we've seen coming from the federal government is a federal relief bill that's working its way uh, through Congress right, na right now. Mm -hmm. uh, there will be, uh, for some businesses, who contribute into unemployment insurance, there, there'll be that option for mm -hmm. some folks as well. It's a, it's a very yeah. trying yeah. time, to say the least. Yeah. And some of the measures that uh, have been implemented in addition to some businesses closing, tribal facilities are closing, mm -hmm. and only employees that contribute to fulfilling the joint emergency operations plan are being uh, activated at this time. Mm -hmm. But for those who can't go to Yunga Kualono and work, uh, the option to telework is being provided. Right. Mm -hmm. Is it a is it sort of a, a ghost town at the tribal building right now in terms of would you recommend that people just make phone calls first before they show up there because it is such a skeletal crew? Yeah, uh, that's our advice right now. If you have any appointments, meetings, you know, please call ahead. I can say right now that old tribal facilities are shut down mm -hmm. except those key facilities such as our health services facility and the tribal, the tribal building, but those individuals who are in the tribal building are there for uh, specifically to follow through on the Akwazasne Joint Emergency Operations Plan that has been activated. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we also know that the schools have been closed, <coughs> but many of the families, uh, most schools are providing lunches, meals for families who are used to getting this at school, mm -hmm. um, and they would have to call their school for more details. Um, if you guys want to talk a little bit now about um, all of the uh, changes that are have been made, have been implemented, there's a few like tribal meetings have been changed. You want to give an update on that? Yeah, that's right. Uh, work sessions, uh, the Wednesday weekly work session that tribal council holds with community members have been canceled for the next several weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, they've also announced during their talk show yesterday morning that they are canceling the April monthly tribal meeting. Okay. Right. Um, also, uh, poor, per Stephanie Cook's uh, conversation yesterday on the conference call that we had, all of those classes, obviously, that are being held at the tribe were being held are uh, canceled. And she also mentioned something about meals and lunches being provided for those uh, students. Yeah, that's right. Uh, those are students who uh, go to the Early Learning Center. Mm -hmm. uh, they've made arrangements to provide them with breakfast, lunch, and a snack. And as you mentioned, local school districts are stepping up as well, mm -hmm. uh, having pickup locations. Messina Central School is one of them. Salmon River S Central School is also doing pickup at the St. Regis Mohawk School. We've heard that the Akwazasne Boys and Girls Club is also going to be doing mm -hmm. that. This Thursday, the Akwazasne Food Pantry is going to be open. However, they've made changes to the travel. They mm -hmm. want people to come in from the Bears Den intersection, pull into the parking lot, follow the instructions. You pop the trunk, somebody will put the meal package into your vehicle, mm -hmm. close the trunk, and you follow the perimeter of the parking lot, exit to the right, and come out near the St. Regis Road. So there's no contact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, yes, we'll be getting to that. We've got a couple people writing mm -hmm. comments um, on our Facebook page, which is great. And this is about b uh, border closure. We yes. were just getting to that. Yeah. So. Oh, um, right. There you go. So some of just before we uh, head forward, move forward, uh, tribal programs, only essential departments. And they're suggesting that you call ahead before coming to the tribe, as Doug had mentioned, because um, as most programs have shut down. Yeah, that's right. And again, there's been a lot of information. And uh, please follow us on Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, both Aqua, uh, Mohawk Council of Aquazasne as well as the St. Regis Mohawk Tribe, uh, and even go to uh, CKON and Aquazasne TV. A and once again, there's been so much information in terms of closures and changes that have been taking place over the past several days that we're going to be grouping all that together, including the local food distribution information. Okay. So people can go and you'll have a, um, a graphic, a poster, a document mm -hmm. of everything that's going to be taking place for the coming week. Okay. Great. That's great. Uh, do you want to talk about that? Sure. I mean, so with the you travel border Canada. restrictions, <laughs> as of Wednesday morning, there was an announcement made between Canada and the U.S. that all non-essential travel would be restricted between the borders, um, which basically is to, you know, no travel for recreation or tourism purposes. However, supply chains for both countries will remain open to ensure that few, uh, food, fuel and life-saving medicines reach people on both sides of the border. Also, citizens of both countries who cross the border each day to do essential work or for urgent reasons will not be affected. Um, earlier this week, the Mohawk Council of Akwazasne had made a announcement via press release that this type of ban, travel ban, would not affect, would, would not affect residents in Akwazasne. So since this uh, announcement was made this morning for further restriction, they reissued a press release saying that it still won't affect the residents of Akwazasne and that you can find on the Mohawk Council of Akwazasne's Facebook page. But there was a lot of discussion around um, the traveling between the two communities. I mean, it's, it's complicated. Akwazasne is a border community. You have people who are working here and living in Cornwall Island or you know, vice versa. Yeah, I, I, I think that originated from a tweet that Trump did first thing this morning mm -hmm. about the border. Yeah. And uh, Prime Minister Trudeau responded. But our our chief of police, Matthew Rourke, has been in constant contact with the Messina Port of Entry. Mm -hmm. And uh, at this time, it's status quo. Uh, yeah. And what we heard earlier this week from from Canada, from Prime Minister Trudeau, is the restrictions are for international travelers, not for Canadian or U.S. citizens, and certainly not for Aquas Aslono. Yeah. Right. And of course, you want to keep in mind that it's just essential travel back mm -hmm. and forth. You're not going to Cornwall to go to a restaurant, which is probably closed anyway, or right. see a movie. Or it's yeah. just if you don't need to do it, the point is to not do it, to stay home and exactly. Stay safe. It's not a time to go on vacation. Right. And in right. Cornwall, you're not going to vacation there anyway. Yep. You know, and oh, without sure. getting too political, I mean, there was a press release issued by the Confederacy this week also that spoke to the treaties that are in place between Canada and the Uni United States and the Haudenosaunee community that stayed back, you know, I mean, on the American side, it would be Jay Treaty, uh, you know, whatever they want to call it, but mm -hmm. there are, you know, sovereign nation rights there. So just to bring it to another level, I mean, we have different levels of government here in Akwesasne that mm -hmm. uh, are looking at this issue. So, um, <coughs> you know, there's, there's no restrictions here in the community as we've uh, stated. Brendan, what do you know about, and maybe this is, I'd heard uh, in terms of traveling across the border and dealing with the people uh, right. at the booth operators. Um, I don't know if it was CKON that mentioned it. In terms of passing your bridge pass or your tribal ID to the booth operators, you're not MCA. even, you're just, you're just um, presenting it to the booth operator and they have a way to sort of scan something else so there's no interaction. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a very legitimate concern. And in fact, I saw a community member comment on one of the posts that we put out there on the travel restrictions. And uh, their concern was, well, what about for those individuals, say, uh, someone who lives on the island who needs to go to Cornwall, needs to go to Messina or Malone to go get groceries, to go pick up their child or, or whatever other reason, and you see people in the booth, they're wearing gloves. What about 
ourselves. Right. Um, my response to him is uh, perhaps it's a good idea to begin exercising the same protective measures. Mm -hmm. We're talking about cleanliness, you know, clean your office, clean your home. What about our vehicles? We have to clean our vehicles as well. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah. the card itself, uh, uh, you just need to present it at the toll booth, okay? But at the other, at the, the port of entries and at CBSA, you still need to hand over your sure. identification. Well, right. You're okay. seeing a lot of people wearing sanitary gloves at this point. Um, you know, even I've been out and I've seen community members who are wearing uh, sanitary gloves, like what you know, just in the everyday at this point. So I feel like it's taking root the information that. You know, we need to be more sanitary. We need to social distance. Yeah, that's that's the thing. And there's two key terms right now that uh, I want people to follow, and that is social distancing. Okay, social distancing, mm -hmm. and also do everything you can to help flatten the curve. Wash your hands. Uh, don't go to large gatherings. I, we've seen that figure come down from 50 to 10. Mm -hmm. I myself, uh, I left work yesterday and I saw a bunch of teens throwing the lacrosse ball, ball around at the lacrosse box at Generation. There was probably 20 to 24 of them. Uh, that's not advisable at this time. Yeah. Uh, some people are saying, well, fresh air. What about fresh air? Isn't that good? Uh, there's no proof at this point. Yeah. Right. So the best thing is please exercise caution. Stay home if possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were talking about the concept of uh, community-based transmissions, and we're not at that point, but inevitably we're going to be. Um, and so all of everything that we're discussing in terms of staying home or just staying away from people is is an attempt to help, which is something that's going to become inevitable if it is in the community. Suddenly, it's going to be everywhere. So we want to yeah. slow that uh, slow that down, um, which we'll discuss later. With yes. Kim, in with terms Kim, of yeah. keeping uh, health services and facilities, hospitals and whatnot, overburdened with too many people at one time. So yeah. mm -hmm. this is all just working towards that, I think, flattening the curve. Yeah, we absolutely yeah. Uh, yeah. have to flatten the curve because, again, if you listen to uh, um, Governor Mario Cuomo, uh, that wave, uh, that's what's coming towards our health care. Mm -hmm. Yes, and it's, mm -hmm. it's very serious. Yeah, right. Shortages of things. Um, do we want to speak with uh, our health do we wanna, expert? Do today? we want to have um, Kim wanna... on? We can. Let me just jump uh, quickly before yes. we uh, let Brendan go. We we have uh, this discussion around flattening the curve means limiting the number of people who contract the virus so that the health system isn't overwhelmed. This is what we've learned from other countries. Uh, we've seen in certain parts of Italy, hospitals are overloaded and simply aren't enough beds or care available, which is what you guys were just talking about. Mm -hmm. And also you had mentioned earlier um, tribal police Matt Rourke supplying backup at Mohawk School and ABGC for meals being picked up. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, they discussed that at the conference yesterday, how the police forces, Matt and his staff. Yeah, that's right. Um, initially, uh, Salmon River was going to utilize Generations Park for their pickup location, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, for the flow of traffic, it's best to have it changed over to the St. Regis Mohawk School, and that was under the advice from the St. Regis Mohawk Tribal Police. Okay. They're also going to be assisting with the flow of traffic at Thursday's Akwazasne Food Pantry distribution. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that's great. Um, and Elliot Lazor, we touched a little bit on compliance. Yeah, he was he was speaking last, yesterday on the, on the phone conference just about people's concerns. It is warming up, uh, but there was a concern that it's still cold at night, and we've got our elders who might be concerned about how they're going to get fuel and he said just to call the office and he will take care of it. Yeah. So I, people needn't worry about. Yeah, that, 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 that's important to know it and I just want to provide a couple of, of contact numbers for people who are probably looking for emergency services at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, the St. Regis Mohawk Tribes Emergency Operations Center, they can be reached at 518-320-0019. You can also email eoc at srmt-nsn.gov. For the Mohawk Council of Aquazosne, their emergency operations center is 613-575-2341, and they can be emailed at eoc at aquazosne.ca. Great. Is there anything else you feel is important to add, Brendan, before we uh, let you go and bring Kim in? 
Yeah, just a few more points. Uh, yeah. uh, we highly encourage people, please uh, don't go to the clinic, okay? Call ahead. Uh, uh, the next person you're going to be bringing on is going to provide a bit more information on that. But if you want some general information, there are some hotlines out there. One is the New York State Department of Health's COVID-19 24-7 hotline, and that is 1-888-364-3065. Okay, great. great. Thanks, Well, Brenda. thank you so much for coming on and joining us and giving us updates as things become available. We are obviously going to be working pretty closely with you in the next couple of weeks to ensure that the community has all the information that they need to know, the facts and the details. Um, and uh, we will keep you updated. And thank you for all of your work that you've been doing to help our team. Thank you very much. And last word of advice, stay safe, stay home. Mm. <laughs> I'm okay. going to go home right so, now. Yeah. I think. <laughs> okay, so Kim's going to be joining us. They're just going to actually swap out some mics. Um, I think so far we've covered a lot. We appreciate people joining us in yeah. studio here today. Uh, Doug and I uh, were talking about this all morning, diligently trying to research and find um, the most up-to-date information. Of course, I want to give a shout out to our, um, you know, both the MCA and the St. Regis Mohawk Tribe. Their communications teams are doing ama phenomenal, amazing work in terms of trying to keep the community updated. And there's mm -hmm. so many ways to get information out nowadays. Right. You, With technology you, yeah. and everything, we absolutely... You just uh, want to know, like, you're getting the right information. Right. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah, so yeah, shout out to CKON to Reen Cook and her staff over there are doing a bang up job of yeah. having uh, tribal leadership and experts um, coming on board over there mm -hmm. and, and giving the best latest information that they have so that people uh, can panic a little less. We know that these are sort of trying That's times, yeah. very trying times, mm -hmm. uh, so it's important that we uh, keep as relaxed as we can about this, which is nearly impossible, but just do our best <laughs> and knowing that leadership is helping out right. uh, to the best of their ability uh, in this situation. Yeah, and we will be broadcasting a few more times with, uh, in connection with CKON, so you're gonna be able to find a live audio, uh, a live feed from their studios. Um, and I think that's great because we're, you know, we're collaborating and the information is the same and we're using the same experts and it's, you know, we've always had a great, uh, you know, relationship with CKON. So uh, keep tuning in daily and to see our updates. Mm -hmm. Let's okay. talk with Kim McElwain, uh, who is the assistant health director, assistant <laughs> health director. Here in Aquazasni, thanks for joining us today. Nice. Um, so we're going to steer uh, right to all things um, health, which this whole conversation I was looking is. Looking at where it was. Um, okay, here we go. We were listening to the conference call and also, also this morning CKON. Were you at CKON for that interview this morning? No, I was wasn't. It? The okay. health providers went. Okay. Right. Yeah. So uh, Dr. Kelly and Teresa Gardner were yes. there talking about a couple things. Um, and he, one of the things that he talked about was that numbers are going to increase as more testing right. is, is available. So can you elaborate on that? And it's just going to, you know, he's been telling everybody, you know, it's inevitable, it's going to get closer. So that's really what we're preparing for, trying to stay ahead of the game, mm -hmm. you know, that we're going to be looking at cases closer to home. So that's why within the health services, we've really had to address that. Um, keeping employees, like you had talked about, keeping them healthy mm -hmm. um, so that they can provide the services and how are we going to do that and, you know, be able to provide the services if one of our employees does get sick, who's the backup, and so we've really cut the staff down to essential employees, um, mm -hmm. which Brandon kind of touched upon with some of the tough decisions that we had to do of who's essential, who's not essential. Right, so and those are tough decisions, I imagine. Um, some of the things that they also talked about in the last couple of days, which I think is great, are the curbside assistance with the pharmacy. Can yes. you talk a little bit about that? So we're really trying to limit access into the building. Um, we've canceled a lot of our routine appointments that people have, their well annual checkups. We really don't want anybody that's feeling, you know, fantastic come in and be near a sick person. Mm -hmm. right. So we have a triage station. When this all started, we had the nurse sitting up front. 
checking your temperature, asking you those questions about out of the country. Now we've actually gone to where they're coming in. Um, you can come into the first set of doors, but then you're stopped. We actually have it locked. Mm -hmm. So the nurse goes out and will triage you. And like you said, it's the 50 mile radius now that we're asking about. And then the nurse will then direct you to where you gotta go. But as far as the pharmacy, because we wanna be able to keep providing those services. So we didn't want anybody going to the pharmacy to pick it up and bring in anything into the pharmacist. So we are doing the curbside, it's 10 to five. So it is more limited hours. Mm -hmm. During Saturday is nine to 12 and it's 518-358-4877. Uh -huh. So you'll actually call that number. First. Um, yes. Yeah, and that's just if they're ready. That's not the refill line. It's not to speak to a pharmacist. Okay. That's for the curbside. So you get their call, and then they'll take your name, your date of birth, and then your make and model of your car down. Just because when we first implemented it, we had five, six cars, and it's you know all different kinds of cars. Right. So to yeah. identify, and then they give it to the runner. Runner goes and picks it up at the pharmacy, brings it out to you that mm -hmm. way, so that wow. you don't have that's to come great. in. And so. what about delivery? Uh, he also talked <clears> about that, that that is the delivery service available yet or is that something in the we are getting that up and going we should we got a list today um, outreach went through and looked at their homebound patients that can't get out may not have anybody to get out for them mm -hmm. some of our elders that can't get out so they have a list and we are going to try to do it in one shot have somebody go so it's not going to be throughout the day right you know we might have the pharmacist get all the prescriptions together and go at three o'clock and from three out. to five go around uh, we cannot leave them at the door or on your porch or anything. We do need somebody there to um, sign for them just to make right. sure that you're getting your prescriptions. Right. Okay. Um, also, and I think this is a good point, uh, Dr. Kelly was talking yesterday, yesterday about thermometers. And I was mm -hmm. saying to someone, I haven't, I've never owned, I don't think I've ever owned a thermometer. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> so how is important with that, with, um, you know, some of the, the, the sort of points with the COVID-19, uh, sort of realizing what's happening with your body is fever. Right. So yeah. is that something you would uh, recommend as well? And we have, and that's part of, you know, checking with employees. You know, we have our essential employees had to send some home to do the self-quarantine because they may have been in contact with somebody that may have been coming back from a hot spot. We're like, nope, stay home, check mm -hmm. your temperatures, monitor it, let us know. Uh, we are checking all employees' temperatures now too. And it's also that um, inundating the phones of, I don't feel good, I have a fever. Okay, well, what's your fever? Well, I don't know. Because I don't, because have, I a don't have a thermometer. <laughs> <laughs> and, they you know, can just tell they have a fever. <laughs> right, like, you yeah. know, I mean, we get, you know, I mean, yeah. it's warm in here now. I yes. feel like I have a fever. But it's checking that, making sure, you know, it's above the 101. It's not just 99.9. Right. You know, we want to make sure there's that guideline in there. And it doesn't have to be a $40 thermometer. You know, we've had people calling about that. We're like, you know, check Dollar General, you $2 mm -hmm. thermometer, right. that kind of thing. Yeah. Just to check that. Okay. And then, so you're reporting an accurate one. You're not going to the emergency room and, you know, making that too full um, and too busy when it's not Right, when it's either. not necessary. Right. Yeah, you can take care of it yourself. Mm -hmm. um, very good. What... I'm waiting for you to. <laughs> oh, you were doing such a great job. <laughs> well, I was enjoying my were, moment of I, not I talking. To ask, being um, in the healthcare industry, what are you? Um, so there's a lot of pressure on you, as probably a lot of people more than ever are looking right. to Kim. Uh, what are you seeing as trends that are local, obviously to our territory? Um, that uh, information that you want to sort of impart on people um, in addition to washing our hands and having the social distance and those sorts of things. I think like mm -hmm. Brendan had said, the social distancing, like I heard uh, one of the chiefs talking about, that's a hard thing for our community mm -hmm. because we're always getting together. You know, right now it's even thinking about elders that might be social distancing where we normally we would say everybody mm -hmm. get there, mm -hmm. go check on them, you know, have the conversations with them and now it's, well, we got to watch that social distancing, that mm -hmm. type of thing. Um, play dates, you know, we're at home, we're with the kids and they're driving you crazy and it's like, well, let's go have a play date. Yeah. We really can't do that. Yeah. You know? right. If we want to stay a healthy community, we really have to impose that. It's like he talked about with everybody out playing lacrosse. It's great, they want to get out and everything, but yeah. we mm -hmm. need to do that at our homes. You know, we yeah. need to right. get, almost getting back to the family institution, you know, that small family and then, going out, playing in your backyard. 
there's so many things, and that's one thing you know we wanted to talk about. I was telling Brendan was the behavioral health. You know, we do have them on staff, our mental health counselors. They can do phone um, calls. They can do some Great. of the telework that we wanted to set up. Because like I was talking to Brendan, you know, there's what do we do now? You know, I was telling mm -hmm. him, I said, my husband is off until the 30th. I'm like, you know, I was scared, like, oh my gosh, he's gonna stay home with all the kids, you know? Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, I'm fine, and I'm worried, but I'm like, there's gotta be those planned activities. So right. we need to get the information. They're working on that, they've been great. They're trying to develop, you know, Facebook live feeds, some Instagram stuff that they're working on so that they can give parents tips mm -hmm. to survive this, you know, because it is trying times. They're trying to, you know, teenagers that are taking care of their siblings, yeah. where they didn't have to before. Mm -hmm. you know, we may have had to, back in the day, but sure. they haven't yet. Yeah. So it's given them the tips and self-care, you know, taking that 10, 15 minutes of, you know, to be able to take care of yourself. So there's that and um, you can call to make a phone conference for that information too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So just going through that. That's one of the things, thank you for all of that. One of the things that I, I'd written down, like in terms of just han handling this and keeping sane during this was <laughs> phone calls. Yes. I'm on the phone all the time. Uh, when I'm home, um, but for people who are feeling anxious and all of a sudden their anxiety level is growing, um, speaking of mental health, I think this is probably maybe a good time to reach out mm -hmm. to uh, other people, especially if you have people that you care about and haven't spoken to in a while or mm -hmm. people on the other side of the country and you can sort right. of get information on what's happening or in Canada or yeah. in Los Angeles. Give them a call, FaceTime, yeah. instead of just that text. You mm -hmm. know, actually yeah. do face-to-face -face that mm -hmm. way so that you feel like you're having that connection. And then, like I said, you know, call the clinic if you want to speak to a mental health therapist, you know, mm -hmm. holistic health or traditional services. Whichever way you want to go, it's going to help. You know, even if it's 10, 15 minutes, it's mm -hmm. going to help you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think a lot of parents are looking at, because the schools were, were closed, so if you have children, my, chi my chi children are 10 and 12. Mm -hmm. So they're a little older, they're self-sufficient in mm -hmm. a lot of ways, but our school just implemented the distance learning. So I think as mm -hmm. this unfolds, you're going to see a lot of the schools get on board with that and implement the di distance learning, and so now you're in charge of the right. <laughs> the curriculum and you know we're not spending that much time doing these things in our normal everyday lives so that's a huge adjustment yes and keeping a schedule mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know yeah. I mean it's kids might think it's summer break and I can go to sleep later yeah that type of thing and it's sticking with those routines you know yeah. whether it's nap time whether it's bedtime bath time sticking with those routines so that it feels normal mm -hmm. that it's not too out of you know, it's yeah. craziness and chaotic mm -hmm. that you want to really keep to, it, especially if you still have to go to work. Yeah, you know, you want to keep with those and not allowing your kids to broker their <laughs> their play dates. My son keeps trying to negotiate play dates with me, like I'm just going to go to the park and uh, we're all going to play soccer, mm -hmm. or and as much right. as I'm like. Yes, you know, like go on. I'm just like, no, you you can't do it right now, and I don't want to encourage Xbox. But we did look at some of the things that we, you know, uh, you could be doing is Netflixing, taking a walk around your own yard, your own neighborhood, mm -hmm. guided meditation right. on uh, yoga for the yeah, kids. Yoga, you know, we've been starting to do that reading more, yeah. clean the house, spring cleaning. I see a lot <laughs> well, of Facebook posts on I about spring cleaning. I my carpets the other day, and I was like. <laughs> What are you doing? <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> but, you it's, know. Yeah, it's needed. I mean, mm -hmm. a deep cleaning, we want to, I mean, we're over, we have extra staff cleaning at health services nonstop. So, I mean, everybody should be doing the same at home, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, maintenance has been great at providing the extra staff so that everything is being cleaned. We've been keeping people out, so it's been, you know, the staff has been great mm -hmm. that we've had to do with essential and non-essential. Yeah. You know, we even looked at, as far as pharmacy, getting back to that, uh, we broke them up into teams so that that way, you know, say somebody did come in and one of them was affected, we still have a backup team mm -hmm. to keep that pharmacy running for the community. You know, we have a nurse practitioner that we did non-essential so that that way, if something happens with another one, we have her as a backup just to keep the services going right. as long as we can. Good. Um, yesterday on the conference call <clears throat> with all of the sort of leadership, uh, Leah Tarbell, I don't know if you know her, um, she was talking about the ambulance services. Do you know anything about that? Um, did I just catch you off, catch you off guard? Well, one of the Somewhat. things that she mentioned that uh, 
they're only traveling to local hospitals mm -hmm. uh, if there were an emergency situation. This is Leah Tarbell with the ambulance service, and also they have a designated ambulance specifically for suspected COVID-19 transport. Mm -hmm. Transport. So mm -hmm. they they've already been making. Um, taking measures to uh there's extra training for the staff regarding the virus mm -hmm. so that they know so that's kind of um yeah uh reassuring to know that everybody's taking the extra steps yeah. Yeah. and that's one thing to think about too when you're talking about the, how they're going to be dressed when you might see them some of our home health aides that are going to the home they will have the gloves on they will have the gown on so I know that's alarming sometimes for people to see when somebody mm -hmm. shows up that way. Right. But, you know, for their protection and the community's protection, that's what we deem them to do. So right. if you do see that and you have somebody that's going to your house for home care or a delivery, you're going to see them with the gown on mm -hmm. um, and their protective gear. Right. I mean, all this information is, is amazing, and I want to thank you for joining us mm -hmm. in studio today. But before we let you go, what are some of the larger concerns and uh, that people are bringing to health services right now and how would you I think one uh, of the biggest things we are getting right now as far as phone calls I mean there's been a lot of anxiety reg regardless and um, prescriptions their medical appointments mm -hmm. but it's um, should they go to their uh, follow-up medical appointments you know that they might have in Canton uh, Plattsburgh that kind mm -hmm. of thing we have a lot, a lot of outside services what if they're closed so we're just asking when we take the phone calls that they call, they contact those doctors to see, you know, is it an important appointment? Can it not wait for, you know, three, four weeks? And then, you know, is it just a follow-up to read uh, results? Then we don't want you to go there. We don't mm -hmm. want you to have to travel to unnecessary waiting rooms where there might be other people waiting for results. You know, that's one of the biggest things that people don't know what they should do for their follow-ups mm -hmm. or appointments. So we're just having them reach out to those doctors' office, checking to see if they actually want them to come, or is it something that they can hold off mm -hmm. of? And are people people reacting? Uh, are complying yeah, yeah. and understanding yeah, pretty yeah. much? Yeah, uh, we're we've added people on the phone, so we get a lot where they're at, you know it's not you're not getting a voicemail. Uh, so we're able to get those answered and so people are happy with that and they're listening to us because we're able to get the providers because we don't have appointments as much coming in so the providers are able to talk to them on the phone so they're getting the reassurance that way and complying mm -hmm. that way. Okay. Good. Well, so. thank you. Is there anything else you'd like to add before? Oh, we head I don't out? think so, Brendan. I think we kind of covered didn't. everything. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so right. there's some um, websites to stay in touch. It's cdc.gov, a center for disease control, um, srmt-nsn.gov, and aquazesne.ca to give you all these updates as they're coming. And of course, social media is um, within, you know, a good range of using your own senses and you know, to look at the information that's being mm -hmm. put out there because there's so much, you really have to use your, your Really look for it, um, you know, <laughs> when like we have these posted because it has a tribe's yeah, logo, yeah. it has MCA's logo, so you know that we've developed it, we've gotten it from CDC or yeah. even from Eastern Ontario Health Unit. When it comes to Unit, sourcing, right. sourcing is right, really right. important. Yeah, those, the websites for MCA and the SRMT, uh, mm -hmm. The tribal website uh, for this side are probably the best places, and, and both of those places have Facebook pages too. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, which probably has a mechanism for messaging and asking questions, so mm -hmm. that's another yeah. way to communicate. Right, Brendan White? <laughs> <laughs> um, He's still joining us and so sitting on I mean, the sidelines. The most, one of the most important things that I think we can do is to stay, in tu stay tuned in and mm -hmm. not keep ourselves in the dark because then right. you've got a million questions in your head and that's yeah. just going to... Yes, and things are going to, you know, they're going to change weekly. I mean, Monday we're going to reassess, you know, how many yeah. staff we have. Uh, we went from about 155 down to about 60 for the essential staff services. Mm -hmm. uh, listen to CKON, the tribe's Facebook site, in case our hours do change okay. because of everything. So, right. you know, we'll keep everybody and Brendan updated so that information goes out quick. I have one um, last question for you, Kim. In terms of testing in the area for COVID-19, are those happening? Are people traveling to Can uh, Canton Potsdam or... How is so the testing is still know. they're going to do and it's going to send to Albany still. 
So you can do them in house, is what you're saying? No, not in not at health services. Not at health services, okay. but we're still going to contact Franklin County Public okay. Health the way it has been, and then they will conduct a testing and send it out. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. Thank yeah, you. That's well, still thank you. Same. And thank you for joining us today. Mm -hmm. We are doing a COVID-19 update of all of the recent changes. And of course, all of this is fluctuating as time progresses, but we will try to keep you up to date here on Akwesasne TV. If you have any questions or concerns, you can inbox us and also utilize all of the contact information that we gave you today in terms of any of the emergency measures that have been put in place. So now we'll go for joining us. I'm Regan Jacobs, one of your hosts. I'm Louis <laughs> Jacobs, the other one. Now we'll go for watching us. Maniguahi. <laughs>